Okay, so today's video is all going to be about ones and zeros, specifically how you can toggle a bit from a one to a zero, from a zero to a one using XOR. So we're flipping bits for fun. We're also going to cover some other bitwise operations like AND and OR and shifting to the left, shifting to the right, all as part of this look at how you toggle bits using XOR. Okay, so let's very quickly, really quickly, just remember we're talking about binary here, that's base two. Normally we work in base 10. So in base 10, you know, it's units of one, 10, 100,000, so 1,201. But in, um, in binary, everything is uh, either a zero or a one. So counting is easy, zero, one, one zero is two, one one is three, one zero zero is four. And if you look here, for example, at an eight bit byte, you can see that there's one, two, one, 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 two, and one, 128. So 128 plus two is 130, plus another one is 131. So that is the binary representation of the number 131. Now I cover all of this in greater detail with more exercises in my video on eight bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, and 64 bits. So if you want to look more at that, then do check out that video. The link will be in the description. So as I said at the beginning, we're gonna be looking at some bitwise operators. Uh, specific course, we'll be looking at XOR, but in the along the way we're going to be looking at and or not and shifting left and shifting to the right and again i've got another video on this so i'm only going to be covering those things quickly here but i've got a whole video on logical and bitwise and and or operations again the uh, description will contain the link so quickly, and both needs to be true, you know, this and that. So zero and zero, well, that's both false, so that's not true. Uh, zero and a one, well, only one of them is true, so that's still not true. Zero, one and a zero, well, that's still not both of them true, so that's a zero. One and one, you know, I'm in New York and I've got my smartphone, therefore take a photograph. You know, one and one is true. So and is basically, it's always false unless both of them uh, are true, and that's... How, how we do that logically and uh, and bitwise. So with all, one of them needs to be true, not necessarily both of them, but at least one of them. So when it's false and false, it's still false, but if it's false and true, that's true. True and false, that's true, and true and true is false. True, so it's the, it's the other way around. It's only false when both are false, and it's true in all other occasions, including one of them is true or both of them is true. And just for completeness, we talk about not, that basically means to invert it. So if you've got a zero, you get a one. If you get a one, uh, you get a zero. So what does this mean practically as a programmer? These are the kind of things you need to, to understand. You can use and, bitwise and, for masking something. So if I've got this number here, one zero 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 one zero one zero, and I want to find out what the last two bits are, I can mask it with just zero 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 one one and you do that with the AND operation, and then that just gives me one zero, which is the same as here. Uh, a bigger example, if I want to know the far last four bits, I can do zero, 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 one, one, one as my mask, and I AND it, and then I get one, zero, one, zero, so that's those last four bits there. So a great way of, get, of filtering out, masking off the bits you don't want, and getting access to the bits you want. Or you can use bitwise or to set a bit. So I've got one zero 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 one zero one zero, and then I OR it with just one, then that one gets set to, uh, that zero gets set to a one, so I end up with one zero zero one zero one one. And I can do that with any bit. So if I've got one zero 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 one zero one zero, then I set this bit here, then it sets that bit there. So that's what you can do with uh, OR. So AND and OR, masking and setting bits. And quickly, let's just look at shifting. You can shift a binary number to the left or to the right. So here you're shifting it to the right, follow the way of the arrows. So now you get a leading zero. The other zero at the end has been dropped off and you get one zero zero one oh one and the other bit's been lost because you've put it to the right, it just disappears. And the same number here, shift it four times and then you get four zeros at the beginning and then you're just left with this portion here. This portion here, the 1010 has been lost completely.
and you can shift the other way. So if we go uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, shifted to the right, then you get an extra zero at the end here. But notice this is now nine bits, so this is an extra bit. Now, depending on whether you're using an 8-bit computer, a 16-bit computer, a 32-bit computer, 64-bit computer, depends on whether this causes some kind of overflow, whether it just disappears off the end. This is why, you know, counters wrap around to zero again, because they, they get to all ones and then the next thing to do is is go to zero so there's only so much space and again if you shift it to the four then you remember this uh, here now is even longer you get these four extra zeros at the end and this is an even longer number now also shifting something to the right or to the left divides it by or multiplies it by two respectively so for example 138 shifted to the right once gives you 69 that's half of 138. And also true the other way, 138 shifted to the left one will double it, giving you 276. But again, watch out for overflow because 276 is a 9-bit number, doesn't fit in uh, 8 bits. Okay, so next we'll be talking about the power of XOR. What has XOR done? Now, I've got, again, a whole video on this. I'll just cover it quickly here because we're trying to get to this point where we can toggle bits uh, using uh, XOR. So what is XOR? Uh, either one, but not both. That's how it has to be. So zero and zero gives you zero. A zero and a one gives you a one. A one and a zero gives you a one. But unlike OR, this is the exclusive OR, a one and a one gives you zero. So it's got to be one of them has got to be true, but not both of them. And both of them, of course, can't be false. So it's different to or this is exclusive or. So a different pattern there. The key is that one and one is zero and zero and zero is zero. And then the one and zeros mixed together give you a one. Now, the upshot of this system is you get this magical thing, which is that if you take A, the number A, and you XOR it with B, then that gives you the result C. But if you take A and XOR it with C, you'll get B back. And if you take B and XOR it with C, you'll get A back. And I cover all of this in more detail in that video I mentioned. So 133 XOR 88 is 221, but 221 XOR 88 is 133 uh, and so on. So you have three numbers, but you only need two of them to calculate the third. And this is used in systems like, for example, RAID or on hard drives and also for encryption. Now, talking of encryption, I have a video here on how to roll your own encryption algorithm, just for fun, of course, and I use XOR in that. You should check out that video to show you how that works. Also, I'd like to mention, just keep watching, because at the end, I show you how to swap two numbers using XOR. A bit of a bonus in this video. So normally, of course, you do temporary variable is equal to X, X becomes equal to Y, and then Y becomes equal to the temporary variable. I can show you how to do this without using a temporary variable and just using XOR, so keep watching until the end for that. Okay, so back to XOR. Now let's just look at the case where you XOR something with a one. Okay, that's what we're gonna be doing. So don't worry about the zero case. But if we XOR something with a one, notice something here. If I've got one and zero here, the result is zero and one. It's the other way around. So look, one XOR one is zero. So this is one has become a zero, and zero x or one has become a one. So it's been flipped. So here's how you flip a bit by XORing it with one. So the one becomes a zero, the zero becomes a one if you XOR it like that. So one x or one is equal to zero, the bit has been flipped. Zero x or one is equal to one toggle city. So we're doing what we want. Now what's interesting, if we now go to the zero case, if you XOR something with zero, it doesn't toggle the bit. So zero x or zero is in fact zero, so it stays the same. So it all just stayed the same. One x or zero is one. So zero x or zero, nothing happened. One x or zero, one, nothing happened. These aren't the droids that you are looking for. So a quick bit of C code. If you want to set a particular bit, then here's the, the C code for it. We're using logical uh, or here. That's what the straight bar means in the C programming language. If I want to get a bit, then I shift it to the right how many bits I want to get, and then I mask it only picking up that last bit using logical uh, and. So just as I showed you earlier on, logical or logical and for setting a bit and for getting a bit. And here's the code for toggling a bit. What you basically do is you, you XOR, that's what the symbol for XOR there is in the C programming language, with one shifted across to the bit that it is that you want to use, and all the other bits will be zero. And of course, zero, if you just remember, makes everything stay the same. And the bit numbering for this 
for that previous function and this one is that this would be called bit zero, this is bit one, bit two. So if you wanted to set bit zero, you'd pass zero in here in N. If you wanted to set this last bit, you'd pass in seven uh, and so on. So there's the code and you'll find it in my GitHub repository. Now here's the bonus I was talking to you about. A couple of things to notice that x, x or x is always equal to zero. So 133 x or 133 is equal to zero. And also if you x or a number twice because of that those properties we're looking at, if you have x, x or y, x or y, you just get left with x. So 133 x or 8, x or 8, is back to 133. So how do you do it? Well, here's swapping using XOR. What you first of all do is you say X is equal to X, XOR, Y. Okay, so first thing you do, you're XORing Y on top of X there. Then in the next line, you say Y is equal to X, XOR, Y. So it looks like it's the same line of code, but remember now at this point, X here is actually X, XOR, Y, because we just changed it. So what you've effectively got is Y is equal to X, XOR, Y, XOR, Y which means that x is actually, uh, y is now the original x from what we remembered up here, that x, x or y, x or y is equal to x. And the final step is x is equal to x, x or y. So it's always just these x or y looks the same, but remember now you've got x is equal to x or y, x or y, but y is now, because of this line here, y is now the original x. What you really got is x is equal to x, x or y, x or x. And the x and the x cancel each other out, so actually, x is now equal to the original y. But there you go, x, y, x, and you always just apply x, x, or y on it, and you can swap the two numbers without using a temporary variable. Okay, thanks for watching. You'll find all the code in my GitHub repository, github.com slash Gary Explains. And also don't forget you can follow me on the various uh, different social media sites, Twitter at Gary Explains, uh, Mastodon at Gary Explains at hackyderm.io, and you can follow me on Instagram, Gary Explains. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.